In this video, I'm going to review a few basic uh, financial ratios that will help you perform analysis of financial statements. In the first two videos I recorded, I reviewed the statement of operations or income statement. In the second, I reviewed the balance sheet. And so now we'll draw on both the statement of operations as well as the balance sheet um, to develop some financial ratios. Now, why do we use ratios? Well, ratios are useful because they start to take really hard uh, to understand data and turn it into information that we can actually act on. Um, the first two ratios that I talked about were the operating margin and total margin. I talked about those when we were talking about the income statement. Um, but there are other useful uh, ratios here that will help you as a leader and a manager to understand what is going on in your organization, as well as it will, this, these ratios are used by um, finance, uh, uh, financing, um, you know, people who are providing you financing, I should say, um, such as bankers, lenders, um, and then your board members are going to know these uh, ratios and they're going to be interested in understanding uh, how they're how they're impacting your organization. So I'll review, even though I talked about operating margin previously, I'll review that again uh, and total margin. So operating margin captures the, so I've included the formula over here. So operating margin is calculated by dividing operating income by operating revenue. So we go back to the statement of operations, operating revenue, is, um, or rather operating income divided by operating revenue. So operating income is our income from operations. Um, and so in this organization in 2017, they had a relatively low income from operations. They had a much better one in 2016. But regardless, you take the income from operations and you divide it by the total revenues and other support or the operating revenue as I refer to it. That gives you a ratio of, you know, how much, uh, how good was the organization at converting revenue into income? Um, now, I like the operating margin number. Uh, you know, that's probably the one that I look at you know, uh, first relative to the profit margin or total margin because I'm interested, I'm interested in both, but I'm interested uh, in the operating margin because it tells me how well the core business is doing. Uh, this year, this, this organization, the core business did not return very much income. Uh, and you know, probably good reasons why, why expenses were up relative to uh, revenues. But it would be concerning to me to see a significant drop off uh, in operating margin from 3.2 in this case to 0.05. So what we want to do, as I mentioned uh, in, in the previous videos, is I want to compare myself to myself over time. And so I'm going to compare my operating margin in 17 to my operating margin in 16 and say, okay, is it getting bigger? In which case, bigger is better for operating margin. I want a bigger uh, operating margin. Uh, it's not. Um, and then I want to compare myself to others. So I have here an industry standard, uh, courtesy of the Kapinski Healthcare Finance textbook. Uh, it says, you know, okay, so the industry average is 3.5. Well, how, how is our organization doing relative to the industry? Well, our organization had 3.2 and then, you know, half uh, or five, five hundredths of a percent. So not so great. Um, so this is a good measure. Operating, operating margin is a good measure of how well the core business is doing. Total margin um, is calculated. It's a little more complicated, but it's calculated by, or it's also known as excess margin or profit margin. Um, total margin is calculated by taking the net income or excess of revenues over expenses and dividing it by the total revenues and other support, which is the same as we did for operating margin, 
plus non-operating gains and losses. So the, so the denominator in this case is a little bigger because we're including two things in it. We're including this, the op, uh, operating revenue, um, uh, oops, sorry, not, not the expenses, the operating revenue. Um, we're including the operating revenue as well as non-operating gains. And then we're dividing uh, it by uh, dividing our uh, net income or our excess of revenues over expenses into those that, that combined denominator. Now, total margin gives us kind of the, the health of the overall organization, including the gains and losses that are not part of the core business of the organization. So this organization that we were talking about, and if you go back to you know, the other videos, we'll ta we talked about how this organization, most of its net income this year came from significant gains on investments. I won't go into that again, but when you see um, uh, operate, it's possible to have you know, a negative, even a negative operating margin and a positive total margin if if you see something like that, you know that the organization is basically sustaining itself uh, not on its on its core business, but off of its investments. So that gets concerning when there's a big gap here. Uh, I, this organization is actually pretty healthy and it's going to be fine, um, but you know you don't want to see that year over year. So this would be a thing that you know a board member would zoom in on and say, "Hey, that's." You know, that's not a good number and look at how it compares. Um, but here's here, you know, you see, even though this organization had a very low operating margin in 2017, because it did so well with its investments, it actually had a, a, a total margin above the industry average. Okay. The next um, uh, measure of, of profitability is return on assets. And so return on assets takes the net income, right, that bottom line number, and divides it by total assets. So what we're taking here is we're now combining net income from the statement of operations, so that's going to be our numerator, and dividing it by total assets as our denominator. So what we're basically saying is, how good is this organization, how well is, this, is management doing at getting a return on the assets that the board has given to management to control? Uh, and so this organization has, this year, uh, has uh, a 4.89% uh, return on assets. The industry average is 4.8. So they're a little above. Again, remember where that number is coming from um, is primarily uh, gains on uh, gains on investments. So we have to combine um, each of these uh, ratios provides us some insight into the organization. But it's kind of like you know driving a car. Um, you've got multiple uh, uh, feedback mechanisms in the car. You know you've got a speedometer. You've got a gas gauge, right? uh, RPMs, um, and so you you are paying attention to all of them, not just one, um, not just one gauge to make sure that you're driving the car safely and effectively, right? And so you want to, so um, with ratio analysis, you want to build an appropriate dashboard of ratios um, to be able to monitor the health of your organization. So ROA focuses in on return on the assets. So it, Hey, management. So it says, Hey, management, how'd you do in terms of generating income on the total, you know, the total pile of assets that we've given you to play with? Return on equity strips out the portion of, uh, of your assets uh, that um, uh, are funded by uh, liabilities and only focuses in on how much return did you get relative to your net assets or, or if you're for profit, it would be equity. So for an equity company, this would be um, uh, net income divided by uh, the equity portion. So we're going again, going here to statement of operations. We're taking our uh, excess of revenues over expenses, and then we're dividing it 
not by total assets, <clears throat> but just by the net assets or the equity value. Um, so now the board is really saying, well, so when we focus in on ROE, we're really focusing in on um, uh, uh, how much net income is management bringing in relative to the amount of equity that's invested in the company. And so this organization has a, has a relatively low ROE, um, and, but we'll see in a minute, they also have a low uh, debt ratio, uh, which means that they have more equity with respect to their, um, uh, to their total assets than the average hospital does. They have, in other words, they have less debt than the average hospital does. One way you can drive up your ROE is by taking out lots of debt. But as you know, any sane adult recognizes, the more um, more debt you carry, the more kind of financial risk you you also carry, right? Because at the end of every month, your your um, the people who have loaned you their loaned you money expect to be paid uh, their interest and you know and maybe even some of the principal back. So return on equity is a good uh, a good measure. Uh, it's an important measure, particularly in for-profit businesses. We want to know how well are you doing for our shareholders, right? Our shareholders are our equity holders. And so shareholders are very interested in return on equity because they want to know what's the return for their portion of the investment. They don't really care that much about the overall return on assets um, because they don't care uh, about the return on the uh, on the assets that they don't own. <coughs> okay, days cash on hand. Now we're getting into some liquidity uh, measures. So days cash on hand tells us how much cash does the organization have um, to ensure that it can pay its, its expenses. Uh, so normal for the hospital industry is around 31 days. This organization carries 56 days in 17, 58 days in 16. So it has a lot of cash relative to uh, its day-to-day -day expenses. So how do we calculate this ratio? Well, we take, we go to the balance sheet and we find the cash and cash equivalents value here. So that's 44 million. And then we divide it by expenses, total expenses divided by 365. So we take this 327, the total expenses for the year, we divide it by 365 to figure out how much money do we spend on average every day, right? So 327 divided by 365, well, what is that? That would be, so on average, this organization spends about $900,000 a day. So you take, so with $44 million in the bank in, in, in cash, essentially in a, in a checking account, this organization could pay its bills for 56 days straight without any additional uh, income coming in. So that's a very conservative place to be uh, when they have, you know, when the industry averages 30, you know, 31 days. So this organization is conservative. We've already seen it's conservative in a couple of ways. One, they carry a lot more cash on hand. Two, uh, they have a relatively low debt ratio. Right? We've been talking about how they, they have relatively, they have a lot of equity, not very much many liabilities. Okay. Uh, the next ratio is days in accounts receivable, days in AR. This measures how effective you are at converting your accounts receivable into cash, right? So remember, accounts receivable is when we send a bill out, how long uh, it, it goes into our accounts receivable. Days in AR kind of measures um, how old are the average um, bills in your accounts receivable. So uh, this organization is able to, it, it's av the average age of its, um, uh, of its receivables is around 32 days. Uh, it takes um, it, the average um, uh, 
the industry average is 64 days. So this organization <clears throat> does a better job of processing uh, its accounts receivable than the industry average. So that's a, that's a good thing for this organization, right? Because we want that to go faster. The faster you can convert it into cash, the faster you can put it in the bank. And at a minimum, you can just start earning, uh, earning interest on it. Uh, times interest earned is a way of figuring out uh, whether you are earning enough money to cover your, uh, your interest payments. So industry average is about uh, four times the interest. Um, so, so what this is saying is, all right, I get, um, uh, we have earnings, right? We have, we have, um, uh, we have net income, um, and, uh, or income from our operations, uh, net income. Uh, well, it depends on, there's two ways to calculate it. So I'm, I'm getting a little kind of twisted up here. Um, uh, there's two ways to calculate this. The first, but they both basically involve, uh, saying we are getting some amount of income into our organization, and then we're going to divide it by the the interest payments that we have to make. So this organization, so it's normal to have about four times as much income as you are paying in interest. This organization has, you know, uh, depending on how you calculate it, somewhere between uh, thirteen and twenty uh, times that number. Except for uh, here in. Um, uh, uh, in 2017 for this particular way of calculating it. Um, the two ways of calculating it, one way to calculate, so you're, you're calculating e what's called EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes. Um, and that, uh, and, and there's two ways to calculate that. You can either calculate EBIT by going back to your net income Uh, here, so this is my net income, and then I have I start with 19 million, and then I add back um, my interest um, and uh, taxes, which we don't have, um, uh, or I can start with my operating expenses. Um, sorry, with my operating income, not operating expenses, operating income and add back interest. So in this case, if I go, if I go with the first method and I start with net income of 19 million and I add back my uh, interest, in this case, I'm obviously gonna have a, a, a much bigger number than if I start with my income from operations uh, and add back my interest. Uh, so that year, it looks like, I mean, that organization that year uh, had a pretty unusual uh, situation with its operating income. So if we start with net income and add back interest and taxes, um, we wind up with a, a more stable uh, ratio. But you know, uh, if we start with operating income and add back interest, we, you know, depending on how you look at this organization, uh, that they are not earning that much. Uh, relative to their interest, but again, their interest fees, their interest charges are only uh, are less than a million, I believe it was. Um, so we're looking at nine hundred thirty thousand, nine hundred forty thousand in, in interest, and they're sitting on cash of you know forty four million dollars. So are we going to get too excited about this? No, but some organizations uh, where they normally operate around you know a ratio of four that's a much bigger relative bill to their, to their, um, uh, to their earnings. Another way to look at, uh, another way to look at interest coverage because people can, so it, why is this important? Well, if you're an organization and you're running a much heavier, uh, uh, uh or rely much more heavily on, on debt financing, you could, as as is implied here, with these with these lower um, uh, times interest earned ratios, you could uh, be at risk, uh, much more risk of of not being able to cover your your uh, debt requirements. So another way to look at it is to do EBITDA. Um, so like EBIT, it's earnings before interest and taxes. EBITDA is Earnings before interest 
taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Now, we didn't talk about amortization, um, but amortization is basically depreciation for um, non-material assets, things like uh, if you paid uh, a large legal fee um, for uh, to, to, to go through um, uh, a merger, that would be that would be amortized over time. Uh, if you bought uh, a patent, for example, or developed a patent, that would be uh, an asset that would be amortized over time, as opposed to depreciation is used for physical assets. So things like like a patent lose value over time, um, but you know, but we amortize it rather than depreciating it. Anyway, uh, EBITDA is another way of kind of getting at uh, the um, resources that the organization has available to it to pay its interest payments and so uh, or or its debt payments so you have here you're calculating EBITDA is you know or, or the debt service ratio is EBITDA right? all the kind of income that's available to the organization divided by what it owes to its lenders so it's interest plus whatever principal is due uh, in the current year um, current ratio is a common ratio, and it's a simple one to calculate. What you take is your current assets and divide them by your current liabilities. And so uh, bigger is better here because if you have more current assets uh, uh, relative to your current liabilities, you're going to be able to pay them off. You know, you're going to be more certain to be able to pay them off. So we can flip back here to uh, the balance sheet. And remember, we talked about current assets. So this organization has $95 million in current assets, and then it has 37 million in current liabilities. So you, to get the current ratio, you simply divide 95 by 37, and that gives you the 2.53 that we talked about. Now, I mentioned earlier uh, above when I was talking about ROA, uh, ROA and ROE, the debt ratio. And so this is the amount of debt that we have relative to our total assets. So going back to our the house analogy we were using uh, when we were talking about the balance sheet, if I have a $500,000 house and a $400,000 mortgage, then my debt ratio is 400,000 divided by 500,000 or 80%. Um, this organization carries a debt ratio. Uh, so you take total liabilities divided by total assets. So we go back here, total liabilities, uh, is 119 million divided by 389 million in assets. So that is only 31%. Hospitals on average carry 42%. So this organization, this is another, you know, this is another measure that shows that this organization is very conservative. They don't, they, they haven't leveraged, they aren't using a lot of debt. They could use a lot more debt, but they don't. Um, and then last two are fixed asset turnover and total asset turnover. So these are kind of operating, operating ratios that, that get at how effectively, um, and so they're kind of similar to return on assets and return on equity. These get to how effectively is the organization using its assets. So fixed asset turnover looks at operating revenue divided by property, plant, and equipment. So I look at, all right, how much, how much did I bring into the organization from my core operations? You know, how much revenue did I bring in to my organization from my core operations with respect to the, to the physical property that I own? So that's our fixed asset turnover. So this is a number, you want this to be a big number. And so this organization relative to the average hospital, this organization is doing pretty well. <clears throat> Total asset turnover is operating revenue divided by total assets. So now you're looking at kind of the whole pile, not just um, not just the physical plant, but all the assets. And so this organization does a little less than average. And if you think about it, this organization has a lot of cash, right? Cash doesn't help you uh, generate uh, revenues. And so uh, that's probably uh, part of why it's a little lower. <clears throat> 
Uh, and again, it's a, it's a more concern, you know, we've, we've kind of identified it's a little more of a conservative organization. So these are some of the common ratios that are used. Uh, you could have um, in, you know, so some of the ways they're used, these are common, like you're going to look at uh, these, these ratios, particularly operating margin, total margin. Uh, you're definitely going to know about your days cash on hand, days in, a, uh, days in accounts receivable, um, and so forth. Uh, uh, these are used kind of on an ongoing basis to form sort of a dash, a financial dashboard to judge the health of the organization. Some of these are going to be written into your agreements with your lenders. So a bond, uh, uh, when if an organization uh, goes to the bond market and issues bonds, one of the things that might be written into the contract is you aren't allowed to exceed a certain debt ratio, right? You aren't allowed to suddenly go from 31% to 75% debt, right? Because if you go to 75% debt, you've become a, you've gone from being a very conservative uh, uh, business to being a very risky business because now I'm worried you've got so many loans, I'm worried you're going to be able to pay me back. So some of these things are monitored by different, you know, by external organizations and you have to prove, you know, that you're, that you're sustaining that. Okay. So hopefully that's useful to you. I will post this. I will post the, uh, the links to the other two videos, as well as the link to the actual worksheet that I used here, the spreadsheet that I used to calculate all these.